Today we're gonna to talk about the top five mistakes I see women making when they start strength training. The first mistake I see women making when it comes to strength training is just switching things up too often. So, you know, if you see a workout on social media or on Instagram and you think, okay, I'll do that workout today, that looks good. And then the next day you see another workout and you're like, okay, that looks fun, I'll do that. That tends to not be a great idea because if you're switching things up too often, you're not gonna have any structure or progression to what you're doing. And when it comes to strength training or resistance training, we wanna make sure that we're following a plan that is smart, structured, and will allow you to progress over time. And so if you're just doing random workouts throughout the week, if you're just going to the gym, maybe just going through different equipment and trying different things out, you're never gonna be able to progress to the ability that you can. So the biggest mistake is just switching things up too often and not paying attention to structure. So with that being said, I would definitely make sure that you are having some plan going into the gym, you know, either following a monthly plan or something that you can stick to for a period of time. And more specifically, sticking to exercises that you can actually track and progress over time. Because if you're continuously switching up exercises, you're not gonna be able to see if you're excelling or progressing in those movements. And so that's one of the most common mistakes, is just switching things up too often and not having any structure behind your workouts. The next mistake I see is just doing too much. So thinking that doing more is gonna lead to better results. And in most cases, that's actually not the case. That's a mistake that I made for a long time, thinking that you know if I was training three days a week, then I should train four days or five days or even six days. So the reality is more is not better when it comes to resistance training and strength training. Especially if you're newer to resistance training, you actually want to start with less and then work your way up. Because if you're completely new to training, you're actually gonna get a lot of gains in the first you know, six months to a year that you're training and you don't need as much. So you wanna kind of use that runway and do less until you hit a plateau and then maybe you add in a little bit more. And another thing to think about with this is that doing more is going to cause recovery to take a hit. So this is another mistake that I personally made for a long time. It's a mistake that I see a lot of people making, especially women where we're like, okay, we just want to go, go, go and, you know, do as much as we can. That is going to cause you to not be able to recover. And we know that when you're lifting weights and when you're resistance training, you're actually not building muscle when you're doing that, right? You're breaking your muscles down when you're lifting weights. You build muscle when you're recovering, when you're not lifting weights, when you're sleeping, when you have recovery days, when you're incorporating deload weeks, things like that. So doing more tends to just be a recipe for disaster. So you need to find that happy medium of, you know, what works for you, what allows you to get enough, you know, volume in throughout the week, allows you to progress and have fun with your workouts, but also allows you to incorporate rest days and make sure that you're recovering because we know that recovery is where the magic happens really. It's not what you're doing in the gym. Yes, that's important. And the intensity behind that is important, but recovery is what a lot of people forget about. And we really, really need to make sure we're paying attention to that. The next mistake I see is chasing the sweat. So sweating does not equal a good workout. And it might seem like the more you sweat, the harder you're working. And when it comes to resistance training, that's not necessarily the case. So sometimes in my workouts, in my lifts, I don't even sweat. And it doesn't matter whether you're sweating or not because that's not gonna you know, lead to more gains or more muscle being built. Or even you know, if your goal is fat loss, if you're you know, sweating during a workout and you're looking to you know, burn as many calories as possible and you think that that is you know, going to correlate with sweat, there literally is no correlation. It's just your body precipitating. It could be, you know, because of the environment you're in. So, you know, chasing the sweat is one of the biggest mistakes I see. And this also comes back to, you know, when we're talking about resistance training, and this will go back to the second mistake I said as well in terms of recovery. But when you're, you know, lifting weights, and when you're recovering during your sets, you wanna make sure that you're actually recovering and resting. You don't wanna be, you know, if your main goal is to build muscle and to really focus on resistance training and getting stronger, you don't necessarily wanna be like doing a set of squats and then in between those squats doing like 
15 jumping jacks. You actually wanna just rest because that is going to allow you to lift heavier potentially or lift you know, more in that next set versus if you were tying yourself out, you know, doing jumping jacks or whatever it may be, you're not gonna be able to lift as much in, in that next set because you're tying yourself out. And it might seem like, oh, I'm you know, doing more in this, in this moment, but over time, that's gonna not be a good idea because you're not gonna be progressing as much as you could be if you just let yourself rest between sets and also just recover, right? So don't chase the sweat. The next mistake I see is just in general, not eating enough and not eating enough protein. So if your main goal is to build muscle and get stronger, you need to make sure that you're eating enough food in general. So if you are always dieting, if you're always restricting, if you're always in a calorie deficit, you're literally putting your body in a position to not optimize its muscle growth, right? So we need enough fuel coming in to support the building processes that occur in our body when you are breaking that muscle down to rebuild it, right? So I mentioned earlier, you're, when you're in the gym, you're breaking your muscles down, and when you're recovering, that's when you're building muscle. So if you wanna build muscle, if you wanna benefit from that, if you wanna get stronger, you have to make sure that you're eating enough food. And then more specifically, making sure that you're getting enough protein, because we know that protein is very, very, very important for muscle growth. Protein and protein is made of amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of muscle. So if you're not getting enough protein, you could be working really, really hard in the gym and you wouldn't be getting as many benefits as if you did have enough protein in your diet throughout the day. So you want to pay attention to your daily protein intake. I always typically say around one gram per pound of body weight is a good happy medium to start out at. You can titrate up and down depending on where you're at with your goals, where you're at with your body composition and, and all of that. So just making sure that you're eating enough and also making sure that you're not in that dieting mindset so much. And I, I find this with females a lot that we tend to be in that restrictive mindset and we always think that we need to restrict and calorie restrict. But when the goal is to change your body composition, really the goal should be to build as much muscle as possible because that is what's going to change your body composition. If you just focus on fat loss and you have no muscle underneath that you know, when you lose the body fat, you're not gonna have the body you want. You're not gonna have that toned look. You're not gonna look lean. So you need to focus on fueling appropriately, getting enough calories, getting enough protein to support that muscle growth. The fifth most common mistake I see is not enough intensity in the actual lifting session or when you're, you know, lifting weights. So this is different from, you know, chasing the sweater, you know, focusing on not, not resting enough during your sets. Intensity is more so like making sure that you are lifting heavy enough that you can stimulate that muscle growth. So there's a time and place for, you know, lower reps, higher weight, but if you're always doing lower reps, higher weight, your body's gonna adapt to that. And that's also gonna turn more into like an endurance style workout versus if you're lifting at a, you know, moderate weight or a high weight for lower to moderate reps, you're really gonna be building strength which is very, very important to make sure that you're building enough muscle in the long term. So just making sure that your workouts are, you know, have enough intensity in them in that regard, and also making sure that you're paying attention to your technique, your form, those are all gonna be important to make sure that you're not injuring yourself and that you can, you know, optimize your muscle growth to the best ability. So those aren't necessarily the, the only mistakes I see, but those are the top mistakes that I see women making, especially when they're new to strength training or resistance training. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn more about nutrition, fitness, or metabolic flexibility, you can check out our website, metflexlife.com. There you can find our podcast, okay. Metflex and Chill, our nutrition and exercise programs, our latest blog posts, free recipes, and much more.